Welcome to Invest Ed. Welcome guys sa Invest Ed. So ngayon yung ating reviewin at i-analyze ng stocks ay ang company na First Gen, okay? Analyze ng stocks, no? malalaman natin dito kung ano yung strength and weaknesses ng company and future growth ba yung company? Nag-improve ba sila over the years, over the past 5 years, or over the next 10 years? Okay, no? So yun yung mga aalamin natin na uh, data, okay? Na sa pag-analyze ng stocks, pag-review, no? Um, magkakaroon tayo ng pundasyon, no? Sa papasokin natin na stocks. Kung, kung maganda ba siya for a long term, kung maganda ba siya paglaga ka ng pera natin pinaghirapan, okay? Okay, so kaya nandito ako sa inyo para i-share sa inyo yung knowledge ko and yung experience ko for the past 7 years na pag invest sa stock market. And ibabahagi ko to sa inyo ng libre. And as always guys, um, kung di pa nakakasubscribe sa channel natin, please subscribe kasi may marami pa kayong matututunan dito sa channel natin. And, and again, maraming maraming salamat sa mga subscribers natin. No? Man sa go, nag-umpisa tayong uh, gawin tong channel natin. No? from 10 subscriber 4 months ago to 1,500 subscriber na tayo ngayon, no? So, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo and asahan nyo na maraming fan videos na kagaya nito ang parating, okay? So, umpisa na natin. So, ano yung matututunan natin sa pag-analyze at pag-review ng stocks? Siyempre yung history of FGEN, about FGEN, technical analysis of FGEN, and financial report of FGEN, no? Kasi dito tayo makikita or ma-analyze natin kung maganda pa pag-investan yung company na ina-analyze natin and worth it ba yung pera natin sa kanya. Okay? Siyempre yung intrinsic value. No? Kasi napaka-importante kapag magbibili tayo ng stocks or mag invest tayo sa stocks kasi al alam dapat natin kung ano yung intrinsic value or yung fair value ng isang stocks. Bakit? Kasi kahit gaano kaganda yung investment kapag nagbumili ka sobra or higher price it is a worthless investment okay syempre doon tayo bibili sa sale na uh, sale na company no doon tayo bibili sa good fundamentals good future growth and syempre sale yung company okay and lastly buy buy or sell or it's a good or bad company ba okay ina-analyze natin okay so lahat ng yan is pagsasama-sama natin sa video para makabuo tayo ng conclusion sa ating ating ina-analyze okay so as always guys so let's start and see you on the other side Welcome guys sa channel natin. So dito, binabahagi ko yung 7 years of experience ko sa pag-trade ng stocks and forex and also sa pag-invest ko sa stock market. Ang kagandahan pa dito, it's completely free. Ang gagawin nyo lang, isubscribe at pindutin ang bell button para ma-notify kayo sa mga bagong uploads na lalabas. Okay guys, kapag napindot nyo na, ano bang ba matututunan nyo dito sa channel natin? So dito, Nagba-backtest tayo ng strategy, no? Kung ano yung mga, kung mga gusto kayong i-backtest, na pa-backtest na strategy, comment nyo lang and gagawa natin ng backtest dyan. At pinabahagay ko rin kung paano ako nag invest sa stock market using intrinsic value. And then, meron tayong market recap, okay? So, kung may mga gusto kayong ipa-request na stocks, ipa-analyze, so, i-comment nyo lang dyan and then, i-gagawa natin ng paraan para ma para ma-analyze natin yung stocks na yan. Okay guys? At meron din tayong weekly analysis sa ating channel. Okay, sa Trading 101 naman, dito naman, um, binabahagi ko dito kung paano uh, tayo magsisimula sa pag-trade at ano yung mga kalagahan ng support and resistance. Okay, so dito ko siya binabahagi. So yung the last, yung learn to trade forex. So dito binabahagi ko kung paano ako nagtitrade sa forex. Okay? So yung mindset ko sa forex at sa stocks is pareho lang sa pagtitrade. Okay guys, kung interesado ka sa mga nabanggit ko, please subscribe and see you in the other side. So history of FGEN. Okay? Uh, First Gen Corporation was incorporated and registered with the Security and Exchange Commission on December 22, uh, 1998. Okay? FGEN and its subsidiaries are involved in the power generation business. FGEN is the largest clean, renewable, and independent power producer in the Philippines. The total installed capacity of uh, 3,492 megawatts as of December 31, 2019. Okay? So in short, uh, FGEN is a power business. So 
As of December 31, 2019, First Philippine Holdings Corporation directly or and indirectly owns a uh, 67.59% and 66.98%, uh, okay, respectively of the common shares of FGen and 100% of FGen Voting's preferred shares, uh, Lopez Incorporated. It's the ultimate parents company of FGen. Okay? So, for more information about this company, no? So, maybe play tayo yung video about sa kanila. Okay? Through its subsidiaries, engages in the power generation business in Philippines. As of December 31st, 2019, the company had an installed capacity of 3,492 MW. It operates through FGPC. FGP, FNPC, Prime Meridian, EDC and subsidiaries, and FG Hydro segments. The FGPC segment operates Santa Rita, a 1000 MW combined cycle, natural gas fired power plant. The FGP segment operates San Lorenzo, a 500 MW combined cycle, natural gas fired power plant. The FNPC segment owns and operates San Gabriel, a 420 megawatts natural gas fired power plant. The Prime Meridian segment owns and operates Avion plant, a 97 megawatt open cycle natural gas fired power plant. The EDC and subsidiary segment holds service contracts with the Department of Energy to explore, develop, and utilize the resources in the relevant 11 geothermal contract areas. It also owns a 150 MW Spurgos Wind and 6.82 MW Spurgos Solar Power Plants that are situated in Burgos, Ilocos Norte. FG Hydro Segment operates Pantabangan Massey Way, a 132 MW hydroelectric plant. The company serves electric cooperatives, privately owned distribution utilities, and large industrial clients. First Gen Corporation was founded in 1998 and is based in Pasig City, the Philippines. First Gen Corporation is a subsidiary of First Philippine Holdings Corporation. So ayun, nakita na natin no, kung ano yung meron sa kanila. Okay? And saan sila, ano yung kanilang focus, no? So dumako na tayo sa technical analysis of FGen. Okay, welcome guys sa technical analysis ni FGen. No? So nakikita natin dito no, is... Ano, uh, saan na siya range siya, no? Kasi nakikita natin dito na uh, si FGen ay nasa range market siya, no? For here, no? Okay? So, nakita natin yung last scandal niya, okay? Is nerespeto niya itong support na nandito sa atin, no? Okay? Ang ayaw natin makita sa kanya is i-break niya itong area na to no? Yung area na itong i-break niya, okay? Kasi pag rinig niya yan, yung support natin, ito na yung, ito na yung susunod na support natin, no? Kapag rinig niya itong area na to Okay? So far, no, nakita naman natin na nire-respeto niya, nire-respeto niya yung line na to, okay? O yung support na naandito, okay? So, we expected, kung nire-respeto niya tong support na to, mag-range lang siya dito, no? Okay? Magka-trade lang siya dito sa pagitan na yan, okay? So, yan nato is, is a strong resistance. So, titignan natin kapag naandiyan na yung presyo, no? Kung ano yung, gaga ano yung gagalawin niya, ano yung galaw na gagawin niya dito, okay? Either i-hit niya ba to or... Uh, babasagin niya or talaga ang respetory niya lang kaya babalik lang siya dito na nag-range lang siya okay so yung mga tinitignan natin dito kay FGen okay sa kanyang technical analysis kung gugulit kasi tayo dito ng trend line din no? ayan ayan papansin natin na talagang nare-respeto niya yung ating support na nandito okay so ito yung ating critical point na no? so kapag mabasag niya to okay sa second na support is ito okay then ito na yung susunod na no? So, ayun yung mga tinitignan natin na ang gulo kay FGen. Okay, so yun lang muna guys ang uh, technical analysis about kay FGen. Back to the topic tayo. So, tapos na natin pag-aralan yung technical analysis of FGen and ano yung position niya ngayon sa technical side. Okay, so ngayon dumako na tayo sa fundamentals ni FGen. Okay? So, ngayon nandito tayo sa free cash flow of FGen. No? So, uh, kinuha natin yung data niya for the past 5 years of free cash flow ni FGen. Okay, so... Para makuha pala yung free cash flow, no? kailangan lang natin cash from operating activities minus lang natin yung capex, okay? Para makuha ang free cash flow. Ngayon, ano kahalaga nito as an investor para sa atin, okay? Yung free cash flow, ito yung ginagamit ng company, no? 
Ito yung ginagamit ng company para bigay ng dividendo, mag buyback of shares, mag-improve sa kanilang businesses, no? Kaya napaka-importante na titignan natin yung free cash flow ng isang company, okay? Kasi ang ayaw natin makita sa free cash flow ng isang company is puro negative yung kanyang free cash flow. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, kapag nagbibigay sila ng dividendo, pag negative yung free cash flow nila at nagbibigay sila ng dividendo, saan nila kinakuha yung dividendo? Okay, magagaling siyempre, magluloan sila para lang magbigay ng dividendo sa kanilang shareholders. Which is, pag ganun, negative sa atin yun, no? Kasi, uh, yung mag ibibigay mong dividendo, iuutang mo para ibigay sa mga shareholders, that's not a good sign na you are a profitable eh, company, no? Pero which, in this case, nakita natin kay FJ, no? Over the past 5 years, yung kanyang free cash flow is tumataas, okay? So, from 2015, meron siyang 20... Um, 226 million free cash flow and in 2019 na mayroon na siyang 649.82 million free cash flow. So nakikita natin over the years tumataas yung kanyang free cash flow which is a good sign para sa mga uh, investors kasi tumataas yung kanyang free cash flow. Okay, so para sa madaling salita, no, for example na lang, 100% owner tayo ni FGEN. So tayo may are, no? So, anong ibig sabihin nitong free cash flow para sa atin as a 100% owner ni FGEN? So, ang ibig sabihin nito, ito na yung para sa atin. No? Yung free cash flow na matitira, ito na yung para sa atin. Ito na yung ilagay, pwede natin ilagay sa banko. Okay? Ibig sabihin yung free cash flow, ito yung natitirang pera pagkatapos bayaran lahat-lahat ng mga dapat bayaran. So, in short, free cash flow is a measures of company profitability. So, yung data nito 2019 pa to, no? So, wala pa dito yung 2020 uh, data. So, gusto natin makita yung 2020 kung gaano siya naapektuhan ng COVID-19, no? So, yun ang gusto natin makita, okay? So, ngayon, nakukunin natin is yung free cash flow ni FGEN for the past uh, quarter, no? Yung quarter, latest quarter ngayon, the past quarters, okay? So, nakikita natin dito yung quarter niya in latest quarter or second quarter of 2020, meron siyang positive 277.22 million free cash flow. So, positive. So, compare natin siya doon sa of 2020 na meron lang 195.36 million free cash flow. So, tumaas siya. No? Even though na mayroong pandemic, tumaas pa rin yung kanyang free cash flow, okay? In comparing to the uh, second quarter of 2020 and um, second quarter of 2019, nakikita natin na medyo bumaba yung free cash flow ng second quarter of the 20, uh, 2020, no? From uh, 371 million free cash flow to uh, 277 million free cash flow. But still, understandable naman yun kasi COVID, no? And, and talagang uh, majority of Uh, the stocks talagang bumaba ngayon, no? And ang talakayin natin no, kung ano nangyari sa kanila, no? For this second quarter of 2020, no? Kung ano yung report na meron sila, okay? Kasi, kung ipapakita ko lang to sa inyong free cash flow, hindi to enough para um, makonclude natin and, at kung ano yung nangyari sa kanya. Okay, guys? The latest report of FGEN for the second half of 2020, no? Okay, ngayon nandito tayo sa revenue breakdown ni FGEN, okay? So, 99.4% ng kanilang revenue ay nanggagaling sa kanilang electricity and 0.6% galing sa uh, others. Na. Sabi dito sa report no, from COL, sabi, um, the first half of 2020, uh, recurring earnings ahead of forecast. And FGEN, second quarter of 2020, recur uh, recurring net income declined uh, 14.7% to 67.7 million US dollars. This brought first half of 2020 recurring net income to 132.6 million down, 14.9% year to year. The higher the expected earnings was mainly driven by the better than expected performance of the gas plan and ADC as well as the lower than expected interest expense and interest expense declined by declined by 13% to uh, 47.4 million US dollar okay this is the result summary of second quarter of 2020 so uh, in US dollar to no okay 
nakita natin dito yung revenue ni uh, FGen comparing to the second quarter of 2019 and comparing to the second quarter of 2020 down by 20.5 percent and the net income down by 20 percent uh, no okay pagdating naman sa kanilang gas plants earnings bit forecast no so or sabi dito no the earnings contributions of FGen's gas plants in Santa Rita, San Lorenzo, San Gabriel and Avila declined by 16% to uh, 88 million US dollars while the ADC earnings exceeds forecast on lower than expected operating cost no uh, ADC first half of 2020 recurring earnings declined by uh, 17% to 5.2 billion pesos and EDC revenue declined by 15% to uh, 18.4 billion pesos. Uh, sabi dito no, EDC earning bit forecast due to the lower than expected operating cost. EDC said that the lower uh, revenue were partially offset by the de uh, declining cost of sales. And yung kanina kasi ano sabi dito no sa report is yung kanilang decline of in revenue was mainly due to a a drop of sales volume, okay, resulting to a 20% drop, okay. It's the report of FGen, no, for the first half of 2020, okay. Tanong natin, no, kung ano yung uh, reason kung bakit naging ganito yung kanilang free cash flow, okay. So, pumunta na tayo sa susunod pang uh, topic, okay. So, ngayon, itong earnings per share versus free cash flow per share. So, napaka-importante nitong basihan. So, inaalam natin, no, kung... Uh, gaano kaganda, okay, yung earnings per share compared sa free cash flow per share, okay? Okay, tinitignan natin dito yung uh, credibility ng earnings per share versus sa free cash flow per share. So, anong gusto natin makita dito kapag nag-a-analyze tayo ng uh, earnings per share versus free cash flow per share? Pag kinocompare natin itong dalawa. Uh, ang gusto natin makita, syempre, mas malaki yung uh, free cash flow per share kesa sa earnings per share or mababa ng kaunti yung free cash flow per share kaysa sa earnings per share, no? So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Ang ibig sabihin nun, there's enough of cash na meron yung company compare sa uh, earnings per sa earnings niya, okay? Ay, so, ibig sabihin nun, there's a big potential na masasabi natin na meron pa siyang sa big potential na merong growth. O, so, ang ibig sabihin nun, marami pa i-improve yung company, no? Kasi meron pa siyang pile of cash, sobrang dami ng pile of cash niya. Okay, pa ano naman yung ayaw nating makita, no? Ang ayaw nating makita na negative yung kanyang free cash flow per share and sobrang laki na earnings per share. Or, ang malaki yung earnings per share at sobrang laki ng difference ng free cash flow per share. So, doon tayo magduda kung bakit negative yung free cash flow per share o mababa yung free cash flow per share pero malaki yung earnings per share. Yung difference nila sobrang laki. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, there's something na nangyayari sa business. So, yung aalamin natin. Yun yung aalamin natin, na? So, na ito yung kanya earnings per share for 2019. Nakikita natin na mayroon siyang 3.53 earnings per share. And, yung kanya free cash flow per share is nasa 0.18 lang. Okay? So, nakikita natin na there's a big difference sa kanya. Okay? So, yun nga yung tutulad na sinabi natin kanina, no? So, alam natin, okay? So, there's something na nangyayari sa kanya, no? Kulang ng pile of cash. Yung alamin natin kung bakit, bakit ganun, bakit ang laki ng earnings per share, bakit wala na yung free cash flow per share, kulang na yung free cash flow per share, and sobrang liit ng free cash flow per share. So, yun yung aalamin natin, okay? Yung susunod, yung uh, free cash flow yield, nakikita natin na uh, sobrang baba. So, nakikita natin na 1% na yung kanyang free cash flow yield. So, anong ibig sabihin itong free cash flow yield? So, dito, tinitignan natin yung kung undervalue ba yung stocks na uh, ina-analyze natin, no? Pag 10% pataas yung yung kanyang free cash flow yield, it is a solid business and it is an undervalue stocks, okay? So, na nakita natin uh, 1%, ibig sabihin nito, it is... Uh, overvalue in terms of in respect to free cash flow yield, no? Okay? And nakikita natin yung net profit margin niya, 19% yung kanya net profit margin, which is good kasi uh, mataas. Okay, now susunod yung moat analysis natin, no? Okay? So, uh, moat analysis popularized by Warren Buffett, so it refers to a business ability to maintain competitive advantage over its competitors, okay? In order, in order to protect it's long-term profit and market shares from competing firms. So, dito ina-analyze natin, no, na uh, 
Um, Titignan natin dito na hindi basta-basta mapapasok yung uh, yung company no or your or meaning yung barriers of entry sobrang laki or sobrang hirap pasukan. Okay? So ang gusto nating makita dito yung kat, yung apat na categories na yan, 10% pataas over the past five years yung kanyang um, growth rate, no? So first, nakikita natin sa earnings per share ay merong 15% growth rate in 5 years. So, which is maganda. Samantala yung kanyang cash from operating activities na sa 2% lamang. Kaya nasa 12% over the past year, over the past 5 years. Okay, maganda. Samantala yung kanyang book value per share is nasa 23% uh, growth in the past 5 years. 22%, which is maganda, no? Okay? So, again, yun kung gusto natin makita is, yung apat na categories na yan is 10% pataas yung kanyang compound annual growth rate. So, masasabi natin na matibay yung kanyang moat, hindi basta-basta napapasok ng mga competitors. Okay? So, in this case, nakikita natin, no, na mataas, but, uh, sa mata ng cash from operating activities, bumaba siya, na 2%, uh, 2 lang. So, i-relatings natin siya ng Ah, uh, nine, no? So, one is the lowest, ten is the highest. So, uh, ang rating is nine, so which is good, no? And now, dumako tayo sa management analysis, okay? So, sa pag-manage, uh, sa pag-review natin, pag-analyze, sa management analysis, ang kinukuha natin dito is yung ROIC and ROE. So, ano nga ba muna yung ROIC? So, companies that have high ROIC are one that efficiently use the capital that they raise in order to grow the business. So, we look at ROIC, 10% pataas over the, over the years, no? So, uh, yun ang gusto natin tignan, na 10% pataas yung kanyang ROIC. Okay, na nakikita natin dito, from 2015, na mayroon siyang uh, 6%, 2017, 7, 15, uh, 2017, 5%, 2018, 8%, and 2019 is 11%. So, nakikita natin na, uh, um, Okay, nag-grow pa, nag-grow yung kanyang ROIC, but uh, hindi siya stable no, sa 10%. Okay? Okay, na i-confirm natin siya doon sa uh, ROE naman. Okay, na i-confirm natin yung ROIC sa ROE naman. Okay? ROE of greater than 10% over time, so it demonstrates the effectiveness of management to increasing the value of shareholders. Again, dito sa ROE, gusto natin makita over time yung kanyang uh, ROE is 10% pataas. Okay. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, minimeasures mini dito kung gaano kagaling yung management to handle cash and to produce profit okay, from their businesses. Or, gaano kagaling yung management sa paghandle ng other people's money. So, in 2015, nakikita natin na meron siyang 10%. 2016, na meron 12%. And 2017, na meron 7%. 2018 na merong 12% and 2019 na merong 14%. Okay? So nakikita natin na meron mer medyo nagkaroon ng diferensya no from ROIC and ROE. But still it is a good measures of management level no. So ang ang rate is natin sa kanya is 8. So, now dito na tayo sa debt analysis na. No? So nakikita natin dito no ang measures natin sa debt analysis is yung debt to earnings ratio. So okay? Okay, so yung debt to earnings ratio, ang gusto natin nakita dito pa nag analyze tayo sa debt analysis is less than 3 years yung kanyang debt to earnings ratio. Because uh, less than 3 years are considered stable because they do not have a large amount of interest expense or debt to service the company. So, ayun yung gusto natin nakita. Over the years, nakikita natin sana na 3, per, uh, 3 years pababa lang yung kanyang to earnings ratio. So, in this case, nakikita natin, from 2015, is nasa 16 years yung kanyang um, debt to earnings. 2015 is nasa 11.27. 2017, 16.45 years. While 2018, nasa 9 years. And 2019, nasa 5 points, 5 years na lang. Okay? Nakikita natin dito na hindi siya bumababa sa 3 years. Okay? So, which is medyo negative tayo pagdating sa kanyang debt analysis. But still, nakikita natin dito, from 2017 to 2019, bumababa na yung kanyang uh, debt to earnings. So, ibig sabihin niya, nag improve na. So, ang meaning nito, um, bumababa na yung kanilang 
interest expense, no? O yung kanilang utang na sineservice, okay? So, which is maganda sa atin yan. But still, yung ating categories, hindi pa rin siya nag-meet sa ating categories na 3 years pababa lang. Okay, now, ano yung meaning nitong debt to earnings ratio, okay? So, ang meaning nito, uh, gaano katagal mababayaran ng company yung kanyang long-term debt, okay? Gamit lamang yung kanyang net income. Meaning ng debt to earnings ratio, okay? So, nakita natin na uh, hindi siya bumababa sa 3 years. So, ang ratings natin sa kanya, 1 is the lowest, 10 is the highest. So, yung ratings natin sa kanya is 3. Okay? Okay? And now, this is the criteria or the key metrics of our analysis. Okay? So, nakita natin dito na uh, yung kanyang mode ratings is nasa 9. Management rating is 8, which is good. That rating natin is 3. So, medyo negative tayo dyan, no? So, in total, meron tayong, meron tayong score na 20. 20 points. So, dito siya papasok, no? Nasa good company siya. So, it is a good company pa rin. Yung, yung FJ is a good company pa rin, no? So, now, nakita natin na pasok siya or pumasok siya sa ating criteria, no? So, ngayon, pupunta tayo sa second level of analysis natin sa kanya kasi nakita natin na pumasok siya, pasado siya sa ating um, first analysis, no? which is ito, yung moat, management, and debt ratings. Yung mga kanakaraang video natin, may mga company tayo na ina-analyze na uh, sa first analysis pa lang, no? hindi na siya na pumapasok sa ating first analysis, kaya hindi na tayo nagpapatuloy sa kanilang deep uh, tackle of analysis. No? So, in this case, nakita natin na pasado siya. So, pumunta tayo sa next analysis sa kanya. Okay? Diyan, guys, sa uh, market performance na FGEN, no? So, for the past 7 days, no? Nag-return si FGEN ng 2.1%. While the renewable energy or the energy sectors eh, ay nag-return ng 0.9%. And the Philippine market down by 1.4%. Okay. This is the one-year return of FGEN. So, nakikita natin na uh, down siya by 8.7%. And yung renewable energy uh, down by 22.2%. And the Philippine market down by 26.2%. So, nakikita natin dito na um, FGEN exceeds FGEN exceeded the renewable energy sectors and the uh, Philippine market. Okay? And now, this is the price to earnings ratio ni FGEN, no? or the PE ratio. Okay? So, so far, nakikita natin dito yung PE ratio ni FGEN na merong 7.2 while the industries na kinabibilangan niya na merong 7.6 average. The market average is ay merong 12.9. Okay? So, uh, PE ratio of FGEN is good value based on its PE ratio compared to the renewable energy or the energy sector, okay? And in respect to PE ratio of a company ni FGEN versus sa market, nakikita natin dito, FGEN is a good value base on its uh, PE ratio compared to uh, Philippine market average, no? Okay, nakikita natin na mas, mas mababa yung uh, PE ratio ng FGEN, okay? And this is the price to earnings growth ratio of FGEN, no? So, nakikita natin dito na meron siyang 0.8 uh, price to earnings growth ratio. Okay? So, uh, FGEN is a good value base on its peg ratio na merong 0.8. Okay? Kasi ang gusto natin makita sa peg ratio na ina-analyze natin na company ay 1% pababa yung kanyang peg ratio. Okay? It is considered uh, undervalued. No? It is considered undervalued kapag pababa yung kanyang peg ratio. Okay? So, in this case, nakikita natin na 0.8 yung kanyang um, peg ratio. Okay? Kaya nasabi natin, it is a good value base. Okay? It is a good value base or it is a undervalued in respect, again, in respect to peg ratio or price to earnings growth ratio. Okay? And this is the price to book ratio of FGEN. So, nakikita natin dito, uh, yung company, ano, sa FGEN, merong 0.7 uh, price to book ratio, while the industries na merong 1, and same lang siya ng market na merong 1. So, nakikita natin dito, in respect to price to book ratio ni FGEN versus sa industries, uh, FGEN is a good value base on a price to book ratio na merong 0.7 compared to the Philippine energy sectors na merong 1. Okay? So, sa pag-compare ng uh, 
uh, price to book ratio ng company and industries in the market, nakikita natin dito kung uh, price to book ratio nakikita natin kung undervalued ba yung company in respect sa kanilang industries, no? So, in re- so in respect sa price to book ratio alone, so sinasabi sa price to book ratio alone na medyo undervalued yung company na FGen, no? Okay guys, in terms of future growth ni FGen, nakikita natin dito, no? Mas nakikita natin dito yung kanilang forecasted annual earnings growth, no? Na merong 8.9, yung kanilang um, forecasted annual growth, okay? Based on the next 1 to 3 years, okay? Yung uh, estimation na to, no? And estimate by 6 analysts yung nakita natin dito, okay? And yung forecasted in the year end of 2020, yung forecasted nila ay yung kanilang revenue aabot ng 1.85 billion uh, US dollar okay, per year and the earnings is forecasted to achieve 234.5 million per year US dollar then na and free cash flows nasa 471.7 per year and the cash from operating act- cash from operating activities na merong 610 million US dollar okay and this is the analyst forecasted to grow the company, no? And also, this is the analyst future growth forecast of analyst na nakita natin dito. Um, forecast annual earnings growth ni company or ni FGen ay aabot ng 8.9, yun kanina. While the industries is aabot ng 13.4, the market is 26.6%. So, nakikita natin na medyo mababa yung future growth ni FGen Cooper's Industries and the market, na? And comparing naman sa kanyang future annual revenue growth, nakita natin na yung kanyang annual revenue growth is 7.4, while the industries is 6.7%, and the market is 11.7%. Ay, forecasted. So, in respect to, uh, to the data above, no? Kung, uh, in respect to earnings versus savings rate, nakikita natin dito na FGen forecasted earnings growth is above the savings rate, no? Mas mataas pa rin siya kaysa sa uh, savings rate ng natin, no? Na meron lang 5.1% while the forecasted is 8.9%, okay? So, savings rate, ito yung rate of banks ng Pilipinas, okay? So, earnings versus market, in respect to earnings versus market, no? FGen earnings are forecasted to grow slower than the Philippine market, Okay? And in respect to high growth earnings, um, FGen earnings are forecasted to grow but not significantly, okay? And also in respect to the revenue versus the market, okay? FGen revenue is forecasted to grow slower than the Philippine market. And also, and of course, uh, high growth revenue, FGen revenue is forecasted to grow slower than 20% per year. Okay? So, mababa. Hindi siya, hindi siya nakatin, nakakategorize na high growth stocks, no? Kasi, uh, ang gusto natin makita, ang base natin is 20, uh, 20% per year yung kanyang uh, annual growth, no? Okay? So, which in this case, mababa siya, kaya hindi siya makakategorize na high growth revenue, okay? And this is the future return on equity forecasted, no? So, nakikita dito, no? Nakita natin um, yung kanyang future ROE in 3 years, uh, forecasted to have 9.7% uh, ROE while the industries are forecasted to grow 12.8%. Okay? So, nakikita natin na medyo mababa yung forecasted uh, ROE ni FGen kasi sa industries. Okay? So, in respect to future ROE, FGen return on equity is forecasted to be low in 3 years time. Okay? Okay, this is the past performance of FGen, no? So, tinitignan natin yung paano siya nag-perform over the past 5 years. Okay, so nakikita natin dito, historically, annual earnings growth by 17%. Okay, so medyo mataas yung kanyang historically annual earnings growth, no? Over the past 5 years, which is maganda. Okay, and this is the earnings and revenue history ni FGen, okay? From 2013, yan nakikita natin siya. And 2014... 2015, 2016, okay, 2017, 2018, 2019, okay, and this is the 2020, currently of June 30, 2020, 
Ayan. Okay, so in respect to the quality of earnings, FGen has a high quality of earnings, no? Okay? And also in respect to the grow, profit ma growing profit margin, no? Uh, FGen current net profit margin ay nasa 12.5%. Are lower than the last year, na mayroon 13.4 percent. Okay, and aduma ko tayo sa financial health ni FGen. Okay, so ngayon nakikita natin dito, no yung kanya short term assets ay mayroong um 1.4 or 1.5. Okay, or mayroong yung kanya short term assets ay mayroong 1.49 billion. Okay, and yung kanya short term liabilities na mayroong 1.5 0.2 billion US dollars. So, um, yung data na to is puro US dollars, no? Okay? So, kung yung compute natin yung kanyang current ratio, no? So, i-divide lang natin to, and ito. Okay? And impute na natin yung kanyang current assets, and i-divide natin siya sa current liability. Okay, this is the current ratio of FGEN, no? Nasa 1.46. Uh, it is a good, uh, current ratio pa rin naman, no? Yung kanyang, yung kanyang binigay sa atin, no? Okay? So, now, anong ibig sabihin ng current assets and current liabilities, no? Sa mga hindi pa nakakaalam, no? So, ibig sabihin ng current assets, ito yung kanyang uh, ari-arian na kaya niyang i-convert into cash within a year, okay? Or less than a year. While the liabilities or short-term liabilities, ito naman yung kanyang uh, mga obligations na binabayaran uh, less than one year or a year, no? So, ayun siya. Then, long-term liabilities, ito naman yung kanyang asset na kaya niya i-convert into cash within or, or more than a year, no? More than a year siya. And then, liabilities, ito naman yung uh, binabayaran niyang obligation more than a year, okay? So, in respect to short-term liabilities, nakikita natin dito, no? Si FGen, short-term, yung kanyang uh, FGen short-term assets exceeds its short-term liabilities. So, nakita natin, no? Okay? And, uh, in respect naman sa short-term liabilities, Uh, FGen short-term assets do not cover its long-term liabilities. So, nakikita natin na mas mataas, okay, na mas mataas yung kanyang current, uh, yung kanyang long-term liabilities kasi sa current assets, okay? Nandito tayo sa debt equity ratio ni uh, FGen, no? So, nakikita natin dito yung history of debt to equity ratio ni FGen, okay? Ayan. Okay? So, ang ibig sabihin nitong debt to equity ratio, okay? Ang ibig sabihin lang nito, And every 1 peso na, pinap, na ginagamit ni FGen for its operation, okay? Uh, 70 um, 69% ng 1 peso is financed by utang, okay? So nakikita natin na sobrang taas ng kanyang debt to equity ratio, no? So ayun natin makita sa company na analyze natin na for, uh, na 40% pataas ng debt to equity ratio kasi ibig sabihin nito, no? Uh, yung ginagamit niya through operation, okay, na pera, ay galing, mas malaki yung galing sa utang, okay? So, in terms sa uh, debt level ni uh, FGen, FGen debt to equity ratio is considered high, okay? Kasi, uh, nasa 69.1 yung kanyang, uh, 61, uh, 69.1% yung kanyang debt to equity, which is sobrang laki, no? And then, yung kanyang reducing of debt, nakikita naman natin, no? Uh, FGen debt to equity ratio uh, has reduced from 136 no percent to 69.1 over the past 5 years. So uh, medyo maganda tingnan kasi kahit papaano kahit malaki yung kanyang utang, okay? Over the past 5 years bumababa naman yung kanyang utang na, no? Okay? And then yung kanyang debt coverage na nakikita natin dito. FGen debt is well covered by operating cash flow, okay? And then, sa, in, in terms of interest coverage naman, FGen interest payment on its debt are well covered by EBIT, uh, 5.5 times coverage, okay? It's the balance sheet of snapshot of FGen, okay? Ayan, makikita natin. In terms of dividend ni FGen, nakikita natin dito, yung kanyang current dividend yield ay merong 1.5. 1.12% no na current dividend yield which is medyo mababa no and then we we okay and and kung compare natin yung kanyang dividend yield versus the market nakikita natin dito um na mababa talaga yung kanyang dividend yield compared to market bottom na 25 ng 25% ay meron silang 
7 dividend yield no while the market top meron 4.8 and the industries uh, na kinabibilangan ni FGen nasa 3.7 yung kanyang dividend yield okay then yung forecasted in 3 years dividend yield niya is 2.1 okay percent in respect to the notable dividend FGen dividend is isn't notable compared to the bottom 25% dividend payers in the Philippine market. Okay? While the high dividend, nakikita naman natin na uh, FGEN dividend is low compared to the top 25% of dividend payers in the Philippine market. Okay? okay and this is the stability growth payment of dividend uh, dividend yield ni FGEN. Okay? Ayan. Okay, and this is the current payout uh, to shareholders or yung pay payout ratio ni FGEN. Yung nakikita natin dito, 8% um, na kanyang earnings ay binibigay niya sa dividendo. No? Okay? So, in respect to dividend coverage, nakikita natin dito, with its low payout ratio, FGEN dividend payments are true, dividend payment are truly covered by earnings. Okay? And now, this is the leadership team of FGEN. So, nakikita natin dito yung kanilang chairman and CEO na si uh, Federico Lopez. No? Nakikita natin yung kanyang senior na meron 12.58 years. Okay? So, bati na talaga siya dito, no? Pagdating sa pag-handle ng, ng company na to, no? And meron siyang ownership na 0.16%. Okay? Nakakahalaga ng 141.2 million US dollars. This is the rest of leadership of FGEN. Okay? Nakikita natin dito in respect to experience management, no? Nakikita natin dito, FGEN management team is seasoned and experienced, no? So, nakikita kasi natin ito kayo ng average tenure of, of experience or, okay, in, ay merong 9.7 years na experience na. Okay? And yung kanyang average age ay nasa 54 Point five years old, okay? And this is the board members of FGEN. So, yan, nakikita din natin yung kanilang tenure and ownership sa company, okay? And now, in respect naman sa experienced uh, board member, no, FGEN board of directors are considered a season and experience na. Kasi meron silang average, average tenure na 10.7 years of average, no? And nag-average yung kanilang age sa 59 years old. Talaga nakikita natin na medyo uh, nakita natin dito na batikan na yung mga kanilang uh, management team, no? And this is the ownership breakdown of FGEN. So nakikita natin dito from public companies na owned by 67.8%, um, BC uh, BCPE firm na mayroong 12.6%, institution na mayroong 9.5%, general public na mayroong 9.2%, and the individual insider na mayroong 0.9%. Okay? And in respect to dilution of shares, nakikita natin dito, shareholders have not been meaningfully diluted in the past year. Okay? So, sa mga hindi nakakaalam kung ano yung dilute, meaning ng diluted of shares, ito yung kapag nag issue ng new shares, ang company o nag-release ng new shares, ang company, bumababa yung ownership percentage ng mga shareholders. Okay? And now, this is the top shareholders of FGEN. So, nangunguna dito si First Philippine Holding Corporation na o, meron siyang ownership na 67.82%. Okay? And nagkakahalaga ng uh, 500. And nagkakahalaga siya ng 59 point... Uh, and nagkakahalaga siya ng 59 billion US dollar. Okay? And yung susunod ay yung company na KKR and Co. Incorporated na merong 12.59% ownership, okay? And nagkakahalaga ng uh, 11.0 billion dollars, okay? okay? And this is the rest of top shareholders of FGEN. Okay? So nakikita natin dyan yung kanila mga ownership, okay? And currently, this is the number of employee ni FGEN, no? Na meron silang 2,000 employees, Okay? Okay, guys, so nakita na natin yung fundamentals ni FGEN, no? So, nakita natin yung strength and weaknesses ni FGEN. Okay, na alam na natin kung ano meron kay FGEN, ano yung mga nakapaloob sa kanya, no? And alam na natin kung ano yung fundamentals and strength and weaknesses niya about sa kanya fundamentals, no? And then, dumako na tayo sa kanyang intrinsic value, yung fair price niya ngayon, okay? 
O sige dito, titingnan natin kung um, bibili ba tayo o sa presyo niya ngayon, no? Okay? So, para makuha natin 'yan, okay? Okay, guys, so para makuha natin yung intrinsic value ni Fgen, okay? Kailangan muna natin makuha yung future uh, earnings nila, no? Okay? So, yung pinaka nakuha natin a uh, future earnings forecasted, yung pinaka mababang hahanap natin is itong naandito yung forecasted ng COL, no? So, yung kanilang forecasted future earnings in the 2020, no? ay merong 197.4 million no million US dollars. Take note tayo ito, uh, US dollars no. Okay? So, ito ko convert natin siya to peso para uh, mas madali natin siyang maintindihan no. Okay? So, kailangan muna natin siyang hanapin yung conversion rate nila ngayon. Okay? Hanapin muna natin yung kanya conversion rate no. So, from uh, 197.4. So, nilagay muna natin sa ating calculator. Inputan natin yung uh, forecasted earnings uh, in dollars. Now, ito times natin sa ating conversation rate. Because this is the conversation rate ngayon, no? US dollar versus the Philippine peso, no? So, meron ang 48.61 um, na palitan, okay? So, as of ng time na nare-record natin ito, September 2, no? Okay, so ito yung ating conversation rate para makuha lang ngayon kung ano yung intrinsic value ni uh, FGen. Okay, so kailangan natin itong i-input. Ito yung itatimes natin sa ating uh, forecasted earnings ng no? 48.61. Tapos ang gagawin natin, times lang natin sa 48.61. Okay, so this is the uh, forecasted annual earnings of FGen no? nasa 9.5 billion pesos yung kanyang forecasted earnings okay or in short 9.6 9.6 billion okay okay take note lang natin no? na uh, itong conversation rate ito babago bago siya no depende sa time na uh, kinig na natin yung yung ito no depende sa time na kinuha natin no so magva-vary magva-vary yung ano natin time so kung depende kung paano niyo siya ko kung gusto ko no okay sa mga okay lang time na kinukumpleto natin to again no nasa 48 to 61 yung natin conversation rate sa kanya okay and now again no nandito na tayo sa ano uh, dito tayo ngayon sa kanya yung future earnings at kanya yung kanya future earnings so gagamitin na natin to mamaya no now para makuha na yung ating okay nakuha na natin yung ating future earnings with in terms of peso and ang susunod naman natin nakukunin ay ang average PE ratio for the past 5 years uh, ni FGen no? okay okay na nandito tayo ngayon sa BPI trade para makuha yung PE ratio uh, ni FGen no? for the past 5 years pero kung nakikita natin dito yung kanyang data is 2018 lang wala pang 2019 no so para makuha natin yung 2019 data of PE ratio pupunta tayo sa COL Financial para makuha yung uh, PE ratio niya in 2019. Okay, nandito ko ngayon tayo sa COL Financial, no? So, ito yung data niya ng 2019. So, kung natin yung PE ratio niya is ito, no? 5.6, okay? okay? Plus, plus, ito na yung ating 2018 to 2015 na PE ratio. Okay? Plus. Okay, guys. So, this is the average PE ratio ni FGM for the past 5 years, no? So, 9.44. Okay, ngayon, ang gagawin na natin, para makuha natin yung future market capitalization ni FGen, so kailangan natin ng i-times yung ating average P-E ratio times sa ating future uh, earnings or forecasted earnings natin na mayroong uh, 9.6 billion na. Okay? Pakita okay, times na natin siya yung kanina natin nakuha. Okay? Okay, na-input na natin yung kanina natin nakuha yung future earnings. Ngayon, uh, this is the future market capitalization na nakuha natin kay FGen, no? Based sa data na nakuha natin kanina, okay, this is the um, future or forecasted market capitalization ni FGen, okay? Now, para makuha yung intrinsic value ni FGen, so kailangan natin i-divide yung current market capitalization ni FGen and uh, the future market capitalization, which is here, no? Okay? okay, so para makuha yun, pupunta tayo sa Reuters na para makuha yung current market capitalization ni FGen. Okay, nandito tayo sa Reuters no? uh, para kunin na ating market uh, present or current market capitalization ni FGen. Okay, so ngayon yung kanyang current market capitalization is 87.2 billion pesos. No? So input lang muna natin to. 
Okay guys, nakuha na natin yung ating current market capitalization. Nalagay na natin dito sa ating calculator. Now, ang gagawin natin, i-divide na natin siya doon sa ating nakuhang uh, future market cap. Okay? Which is, and then input na natin, uh, and down na input na natin yung future market capitalization. Okay? And this is, ito yung ating nakuhang sagot, no? Nasa 0.96. So, tandaan natin itong 0.96 kasi i-divide natin siya dito sa ating uh, present Uh, price ni FJ, no? Okay, para makuha yung kanyang intrinsic value. Okay, now, uh, ilalagay muna natin dito yung kanyang current value, okay, which is 24.30, uh, and then divide natin siya sa ating nakuhang 0.96, okay? Para makuha yung kanyang intrinsic value. Okay, now, yung kanyang intrinsic value ngayon is nasa 25.3, okay? Okay, now, nakita na natin yung intrinsic value na is nasa 25.31 or 25.3, So ngayon kung uh, ipa-plot natin siya dito sa ating chart, no. Nandito siya. Okay, around here yung kanyang presyo, no. Okay, nasa 25.3. So nakikita natin, automatic nakikita natin na mas mal malapit na siya sa ating intrinsic value, no. Okay, so alam na natin kung ano yung gagawin natin sa kanya, no. Okay, ngayon nakuha natin intrinsic value ni Fgen. Ngayon titingnan natin kung bibili ba tayo sa kanya, no. Para makuha yun, kailangan muna natin, para malaman natin kung bibili ba tayo sa kanya o hindi, kailangan muna natin magkaroon ng margin of safety sa kanya, okay? Which is po, nagkaroon tayo ng margin of safety sa kanya, kapag gumaba din yung presyo sa margin of safety, it is considered by uh, ratings alone in the intrinsic value, no? Okay, so para makuha yung ating margin of safety, kailangan lang natin siyang i-times sa, sa 0.80, Okay, para makuha yung 20% margin of safety. So, nasa 20, 20.25 yung ating uh, buy below or margin of safety natin. So, ibig sabihin, sa 20.25 yung ating presyo, it is considered a buy. Pero nakikita ngayon natin ngayon, no, na kay FJ, nasa 24.3 na siya. So, ibig sabihin, in intrinsic value alone, it is considered a hold kay si FJ ngayon. Okay? Okay, so in summary ng ating pagkuha sa intrinsic value, no? Yung ating intrinsic value sa kanya is 25.31. Uh, margin of safety is 20.25. So, ibig sabihin ulit, no? Margin of safety, kapag bumaba dyan sa ating margin of safety yung presyo or yung current price, is it, it is considered a buy ratings in terms of intrinsic value alone. Okay? And na yung current price is nasa 24.3. So, meaning, it is considered a hold status tayo sa kanya. Kasi mas mataas yung ating uh, current price kasi sa margin of safety natin. And malapit na siya sa ating intrinsic value. No? Okay? And this is the intrinsic value of FJ. This is the summary ng ating pinag-aralan sa kay FJ. No? Okay? Okay? So, ngayon nakikita natin dito yung kanyang moat analysis natin, natin sa kanya is excellent. Management level is excellent, okay? Sa debt naman sa kanya is nasa red zone tayo sa kanya, okay? In terms of intrinsic value, nasa hold tayo sa kanya. Free cash flow per share is nasa 646 million. And uh, earnings per share versus free cash flow per share is nasa red zone tayo sa kanya. Kasi um, ang laki ng difference na kanyang uh, earnings per share versus free cash flow per share, okay? And this is the... Uh, Continuation sub summary, eh, yung nakita natin red zone sa kanya is has a highly level of debt, okay? Highly volatile share price over the past 3 months, okay? And eh, yung nakita natin green zone sa kanya is, okay, the company is currently profitable and earnings are forecast to grow by an average of 8.9 per year for the next 3 years, okay? And dividend is too low to be concerned. The company earnings are highly quality. The company earnings are high quality. Profit margin decreased but not significantly. Profit margins decreased but not substantially. Uh, and no con and no concerning event detected. Okay. Shareholders have not been meaningfully diluted in the past year or recently. Okay. And the revenue is meaningful. And also. Uh, the market cap is meaningful. Pag-analyst ng stocks, malalaman natin dito, no? Kung anong strength and weaknesses ng isang stocks, 
And nakikita natin dito kung worth it bang pag-investan yung company na gusto nating um, i-analyze, no? Or worth it bang pag-investan yung company na ina-analyze natin, okay? Eh, kasi napaka-importante, bago tayo mag-invest, no? Sa isang stocks or sa isang, uh, sa isang investment, alamin muna natin kung ano yung kanyang track record. Alamin natin kung ano yung, yung level of debt. Magaling ba siya mag-manage ng kanyang management? Maganda ba yung moat niya? Okay? Hindi siya basta-basta napapasok ng company ng other competitors. Okay? Kasi napaka-importante na alam natin yung mga, alam natin yung mga yan. Kasi dyan yung mga basihan kung mag-grow ba ng significantly yung stocks na ina-analyze natin. And, and nakikita ba natin in the next 10 years, 5 years from now, 20 years from now, nakikita ba natin na yung stocks na bibili natin is naandyan pa rin ba yan? Okay? Eh napaka-importante na naiintindihan natin yung stocks na bibili natin. Kasi kung di mo naiintindihan kung ano yung business model ng company, eh huwag mo nang bilhin. Okay? So yun ang importante, no? yung naiintindihan natin at alam natin kung ano yung kanyang uh, kinocontribute sa economy. Okay? Okay guys, so yun lang muna guys yung ating analyzation sa kanya. And as always guys, uh, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. Okay, maraming maraming salamat sa 1,500 subscribers ng ating channel. And as always, guys, invest wisely and see you on the other side. Hello guys, maraming salamat sa panonood. Sana marami kayo natutunan sa video na to. So kung hindi pa kayo nakakasubscribe, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell para updated kayo sa mga videos na parating at marami pa kayo matutunan sa channel na ito. So maraming salamat. This is PSE Warrior saying, trade well, trade strong, and trade smart.